Come on, you, there we go. Good morning, it is Saturday morning and it's a beautiful day. And by beautiful day, I mean it's overcast and there's lots of bugs and it's a little humid out, so not really a beautiful day, but it's a day. And it's, uh, it's early, it's 6.30, which isn't, I guess, that early for most people, but for me, that's pretty early. Going to the airport. I'm going to take the beaver up for a quick sunrise flight. And by sunrise flight, of course, I mean the sun rose an hour ago, so it's not sunrise flight at all. But I'm going to go up for a quick flight, bomb around a little bit, and then uh, in a couple of hours, a uh, shooting competition starts at the range here in Woodstock. And so I'm going to go attend that and see if I can uh, have some fun there. So Trevor's coming up from, coming up? Nope. Trevor's coming down from Rustigoosh with a bunch of guys who shoot at his range with him, and uh, yeah, should be fun. Anyway, I'm just gonna kinda see if I can vlog the day, just for fun. Be like a day in the life of Matthew, except that it's not gonna be a typical day, because I don't go flying every day, and I don't go shooting every day, but these are the fun things that I like to do when I can, so off we go. But look at that, there's a turkey on the road on the way to the airport. I probably shouldn't run him over and have him for dinner. It was an accident, I swear, I didn't see him there. He's like, look at that windsock, I'm not flying in that, I'm no turkey. Wait a minute, I am a turkey, ha ha. Alright, before takeoff, flight controls. Three and correct. Altimeter set. Strobe lights on, radio is on, fuel is on both now, seeing as the tanks are level again. And the seatbelt is secured, everything else looks.
All righty. Well, so uh, you heard the squealing on the radio earlier, and it's been doing it lately for a while. I don't know why, um, but I, I, that's not true. I do know why. I figured it out. So I run uh, a lot of my electronics in the plane, off, almost all of them, off of this uh, three 12-volt cigarette lighter plug adapter thing. And this is the one that powers the radio. Nope, the intercom. This is the one that powers the intercom. So that goes back and it hooks into there and it uh, it uh, it powers the intercom. The intercom only runs on a 9-volt battery. So I have one of those. It looks like a 9-volt battery. You stick it in, but it's got a wire coming out of it. And that wire plugs into a 12-volt source and it makes the 12 volts into 9 volts and runs the thing. So it's pretty cool. So there we go. I'm on 1, 2, 3, 4. Four, so that's not uh, the airport frequency, so I'm not going to bug anybody, but pressing the button here. Eh? Eh? Oh, can you see that? There, it's transmitting. No squealing. It was squealing before. Now if I do this, watch. There. You hear the squeal? If I push that all the way in, this little adapter, this little plug, let's see if I can get that there. If I push that all the way in so it's bottomed out, it squeals. If I back it off just about a millimeter, oh, I guess a little bit mil millimeter more, I guess. No squeal. And I've still got the intercom on, the light's still on, it's still, it's still, still on. So I just have to not push that all the way in, which is kind of irritating because I like things that are tight. You know what I mean, YouTube. But uh, whatever, it is what it is, and uh, it's working now, and I will just try to maybe lock that down somehow with a zip tie so it doesn't go all the way in and doesn't come all the way out. And uh, the squeal should be gone. So yeah, that's uh, that's in a nutshell uh, what, what the squealing was. So now she's fixed. So it's time to put the plane away and uh, go to the range and do some shooting. So say goodbye to the beaver. And hello to the Glock. So here we are at the range. This is sort of what I'm going to be doing today. So you see we have those barriers and stuff. So we start out inside of these, uh, they're called fault lines, these red squares, and we have to shoot these targets. We shoot them as fast as we can, as accurately as we can. And the white ones are penalty targets. You hit them, minus 10 points. You can see there's different scoring zones here. They're hard to see from a distance and that's the point. But we're all trying to hit this zone here. It's called the alpha. And then we have the Charlie zone and then the delta zone. And then they all have different points allocated to them. And so you're trying to uh, shoot as many alphas as you can as quickly as you can. So anyway, I'll show you what that's all about. And um, we'll, uh, we'll kind of do some shooting now and that we're done flying and we'll go from there. So you can see where this is the safety area. This is the only spot I'm allowed to unholster my firearm without a range officer present. So this is where I reholster the firearm and now I can safely walk around the range and not get in trouble. So anyway, let's uh, cut to some shooting action, I guess. See, we've got a pretty good turnout. There's Trevor and Daniel over there going through their stages. They're the guys running the match today, so they're making sure they're on the same page, so we all compete the same way, so it's fair. It's on, just point it at Trevor. <laughs> Hope I didn't just hit some random button and turned it off. It's a selfie. I've been known to. Ready. 45 springs are harder <laughs> than 9 springs. I got myself and everything. I get started my period. Wow. Hey, Trevor. I got, I got the aerial shot. Oh, perfect. I'm gonna donkey man. kick you in the <laughs> Are you ready? Stand by. Make sure if you're finished, unload so clear. If clear, hammer down, holster. Range is clear. Time 1057. Oh. 10, 5, oh. 7. Good. All the steel. Steel. Oh yeah. Two yeah, alpha. Yeah. Two alpha. Alpha Charlie. Alpha Charlie. Two alpha. Two alpha. Two alpha. Two alpha. You want a fatty? Scoring complete. Major. Major. Son of a diddly. Thanks. Thank you. Four 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 I know. Geez, oh, it's upside down. I don't know how to use this. It's on. That's great. It's, it's filming. Is, everyone? <laughs> Is it filming? That yeah. camera's older than Marcel. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> but just as big. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> got five pounds on that thing. It's fun size. Yeah. Are you ready? Better remember. Man, I've been in the army almost eight years. Yeah, that's fine. If you're finished, unload and show clear. Mm -hmm. Two alpha, two alpha. Two alpha, two alpha. Two alpha, two alpha. So is that all alphas, Chef? That's all alphas with it. the fastest time with the best hit factor of 499. You win the stage. I'm retiring as champ. See you later, guys. <laughs> So this is what's called the walkthrough. He gets to practice a couple of times before he actually shoots. Doesn't do him any good though, because he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, everything's done under the supervision of a range officer. That's the other guy there. He's holding a yellow brick. It's actually a timer and it listens for gunshots. When it hears a gunshot, it stops the time and then it just keeps going. Every time it hears a gunshot, it stops the time. So that's how we know how fast we can shoot the stage. Are you ready? You need to make sure you're turned Stand by. So do something, do whatever is comfortable. You walk into the pocket. It's not too much to move it. It's just shooting. All right, so I'm not going to be able to... What happens is, when I got DQ, it's an issue. I didn't consider that part. And I was shooting and then I got DQ because I didn't consider that. In stage like this, it's almost matters more not to get these keys and then get the hit. Stage is clear. Nine. Thirty-one point oh one. Alpha Charlie. Two Alpha. Two Alpha. Who Charlie? Who Charlie? You can see all the alpha. Charlie. All the alpha. No shots in the white target, which is good. These ones are good because they're alphas. These ones not great because they're Charlies and deltas, but whatever. And so now what we do is we put these patches on. What? So we have the patch gun. We did have the patch gun. And now we're ready for the next shooter. The points they're all on. <laughs> I'm okay with that, I guess. That's what, four shots and basically one hole from a long ways away? That's, yeah, pretty, that's is amazing. That, is that good, Trev? That's better than um, me until I shoot. Oh, crap. He's got <laughs> He's coming. That's he's going to get me. Stand by. Clear, hammer down, old surf. Range is clear, time 1405. 1405. Two alpha? Two alpha. You got those three there? Three alphas in a row, got it. Yeah. Okay. Alpha Charlie? Alpha Charlie? Alpha Charlie? Alpha Charlie? Alpha Charlie? Alpha Charlie? Two alpha. Two alpha, scoring complete. Those are big holes. <laughs> Who's after two? <laughs> Liam. How do you like that Liam. run? Yeah. Uh, I could accept those hits with faster time. I'm disappointed. Match, eh, Trev? That's it? We're done? Yeah. You're so engaging. Yeah, that's Trevor. Ha! You won so far. Um, so far. So far. So far. There's more to be done. More, more squad shooting still. There's two open shooters left and uh, a couple of strong production guys. Oh, and there's Bill bringing the FX9. Way to interrupt the video, Bill. That's a better... Remember the last time somebody came around the corner, Bill? I did remember. I think I might have had... Yeah, all right then. So we're going to look at your gun. I think I had my gun out. This time we're going to look at this gun. <laughs> Check that out. So what's going on with it? Well... It's not working. It's misfeeding. Like, I'll go ahead. It might chamber the first round. It might not. Now, and is this a problem across all different magazines? I've tried the one it came with, the SNG, yep. and then the other ones I've tried was a um, buddy of mine got a Glock 17. And uh, yeah, they're going to talk about how the gun's not working and try to fix it and stuff, but that's pretty much the end of the video. Sorry for the quality here. I left the other camera back in the truck, so I'm on my phone and that sucks, but whatever. It is what it is. Anyway, that's uh, sort of my day today so far. Started off with some flying, ended with some shooting, had some fun. If anything else interesting happens, I'll let you know, but probably not. So until next time, see you later. Do it again. If you face up the hill, it's easier. Oh, look at that. You did it. You stood up all on your own. Oh, and you fell back down all on your own. There you go.
All right, keep going. You're only on a slight incline. You're probably going to tumble all the way down. I'm going to kind of guard you away from the... All right, keep going. Shoot, getting up downhill. Up, up. Yeah, good girl. Oh, boomba. Try again. Yay! Good girl. Woo, you did it. Now what? Oh, look at that drool. That's disgusting. Well, this is unexpected. Uh, I'm going flying again. Uh, the forecast did not call for it to go dead calm this evening, yet here we are, dead calm. And um, as you know already, the audio cable didn't work very well on the last flight as my camera slowly falls off the dashboard. Whatever. Um, so I'm going to retest it and make sure that it was just actually my error and not the fact that possibly the audio cable is busted. So I don't want the audio cable to be broken. I think I've had this happen before and it was because I didn't plug it in properly into the camera all the way. And I thought I had fixed that and my habit of doing it right, but um, I must have uh, I must have slipped up this morning on that. So I'm gonna retest the audio cable, go up for a couple circuits or buzz around or I don't know, I'm gonna do something, but I mean, it's nice weather, so why not go flying? Owen is apparently going to be meeting me there and uh, is taking his daughter up for her first ride in an ultralight. Uh, he just recently acquired his passenger carrying rating and uh, so yeah, he's taking full advantage of that. She, she asked him if, if she could have the first ride when he got his passenger rating carrying, passenger carrying rating. Ah, when he got the thing where he could take people up. So anyway, they're gonna go flying. I'm gonna go flying. Maybe we'll go flying together. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Anyway, to the gas station to get gas, and then to the airport. Well, it's not as dead calm as it was at the house. There's a bit of wind up in the leaves, the tops of the trees, so we'll see how it goes. And uh, it looks like, upon uh, initial observation, that the wind's favoring 1-3 instead of 3-1. So that's kind of neat. We don't get to fly off of 1-3 very often, because it usually favors 3-1. So anyway, get to uh, check out the other runway and and uh, stuff, I guess, and things. Here we are at the hangar. I should uh, open her up and drag out some planes. I do believe we're all warmed up, so I think we're going to take off and uh, we're going to do a left-hand departure. I think we'll climb to 2000 and uh, head uh, head north and see what there is to see over there. With Dr. Abbott, I'll let India deal with the Alpha. It's departing runway 13 with a left turn out, climbing to 3, uh, 2000 Woodstock.
believe his house elevation is something like 300 feet, and we were at, well, I'm still at 850, so that's still uh, 550 feet above ground level, so we're still 500 feet away from anybody. So I'm down to 35 miles an hour over the ground and 60 miles an hour through the air, so we're up to 25 mile an hour headwind here. Oh yeah, it's blowing. It's not even close to out straight though, so that should be no problem. That's the nice thing about the airport is the runway is shielded by trees. So once you get down below the treetops, you get a bit of mechanical turbulence as you transition from the treetops to below the treetops. But then it usually smooths out pretty nicely and you can just make a decent normal landing. I really wish I had the cameras running the last time Curtis and I flew. I was giving him a, a quick refresher flight on the controls. He hasn't flown in a while. He's a, one of my good friends and also is a flight student. And uh, we went up and we got caught in a gust run. I'm, I'm certain the winds were over 30 miles an hour when we were landing. And it was a direct crosswind and it was very turbulent all the way to the ground. I had to fly the plane all the way back to the hangar. If I relaxed my, my uh, grip on the controls, the plane would want to fly again. So it was, uh, it was pretty crazy. I think I'll fly down this road as I look at it out my side window here. So the GPS is showing me going straight down the road and I am, I was probably 25 to 30 degrees angle off. Yeah, that's decent wind. Well, I'm just uh, tracking behind you, Owen. I'm at your six and I'll be over on the other side of you shortly. So just for fun, see how slow I can go. I know 4,500 will keep me airborne just. The wind should be coming from this direction here. All right, 12 miles an hour, 11 miles an hour, 10 miles an hour. So close. 10.6, 10, 9.5. I am almost parked. This is the closest I've come yet. That means it's really windy up here. Now I just need the outro file, that should be right down here, oh, I didn't film an outro, <laughs> oops. So I guess I'll finish cleaning out the gutters and wait for this wind to die down and hopefully go flying again tonight. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching that 
it was just kind of a little bit of the things that I like to do. I think all I needed to include in that is some four-wheeling and some off-roading where I break something, and then I definitely would have had a well-rounded video. <laughs> anyway, I guess that's it for now. We'll catch you next time.